So here we are on planet Earth, and today we're going to be talking a little bit more about things that are related to planet Earth. And one of the reasons is of course because I would really highly recommend that you support Team Trees. The initiative started by Mr. Beast and Mark Rober to essentially plant 20 million trees somewhere in the world. They're getting so close to that goal and I decided to give them a bit of a boost with this video and also by obviously donating a little bit of my own money as well. So anyway, so today we're going to be talking about this new discovery and it's actually something that blew my mind when I read about it. And it's actually something that will very likely redefine how you see the nature around you. So it's one of those deep videos, but it's based on science. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Man. Now, you can probably already tell from the title what it's about, but let's actually discuss this in a little bit more detail. It's based on this paper right here that recently appeared in a magazine, and it's research coming from Israel based on some really thorough analysis, and more specifically auditory or sound analysis coming from various plants, such as for example the tobacco and tomato plants. It also involved some crazy setup and even machine learning algorithm that would then be used to try to predict various things. But let's not rush into things. Let's go a little bit back in history to a legend you might be familiar with because it was actually in one of the Harry Potter movies, the Mandragora, the Mandrake. The mysterious root that, if you were to try to pull out of the ground, would scream so loudly that it might actually end up killing you. And interestingly, this is something people really believed back in the days because they even had this kind of approach to how to get Mandragora or Mandrake from the ground. They would take an animal, and in this case it seems to be a goat, tie the animal to the root, then basically kind of stay awake, shut their ears, and try to scare the animal away so it starts running and takes the root out of the ground. And if the mandrake root starts screaming, it might kill the animal, but it's not going to affect the human. And interestingly, I've seen this legend or this unusual myth mentioned in many different cultures. So this is something kind of interesting a screaming root, a screaming plant. And while well, maybe, this does have some scientific backing, especially according to this paper. So in a nutshell, the main discovery coming from this paper is that it seems like plants make noises. And not just noises, they seem to be screaming. They seem to be screaming when they're hurt or in uh, some sort of a stress. And this is where it gets really interesting. Now, we already know plants are actually pretty complex. They're not just passive objects that you would put on your windowsill and forget about. They do have actual senses. They can react to sunlight. They move their leaves uh, reacting to sunlight. They also have receptors for various molecules and various chemicals. In other words, they can smell things. They can also react to actual physical touch. The best example of which would be the Venus trap here. It reacts to whenever the insect touches the actual leaves. And they even seem to possess a rudimentary sense of hearing, but we're not entirely sure how it works yet. But this discovery here is probably one of the biggest in the last few years. The discovery that these beautiful things you see here, the flowers, the trees, even probably grass, actually emit noises when they're in stress, when they start feeling pain, like for example, if they were being pulled out of the ground. For this particular experiment, the scientists used very, very high frequency uh, microphones using what's known as an ultrasound, basically similar frequencies to what you would use to study bats, and they've used these microphones to listen to tomatoes and tobacco when they were either dry or cut, or if they were just normally taken care of. And it just so happens that both tomato and tobacco plants were emitting really high frequency, very high pitched sounds that were actually quite loud as well, approximately 65 decibel. And that's basically the sound of a very, very loud conversation or even screaming. So these plants were literally screaming, but in frequencies that we're not capable of hearing. The adult human ear can only hear up to about possibly 15 to 17 kilohertz, even though theoretically we can possibly hear even 20 kilohertz if you're really, really healthy. But to some extent, this is not even close to what these plants were emitting. The actual frequencies were off this chart. They were closer to what bats and moths would hear, close to about 100 kilohertz or even higher than that. 
So a typical bat might actually hear plants scream. And this could even answer a question of why bats don't seem to like to live on trees. Maybe it's just way too loud for them in the forest. Maybe all of these trees and flowers screaming at the same time is just too much for a poor bat to handle. And because moths can hear ultrasound as well, they could potentially choose healthier trees to, for example, lay their eggs. Now, this is a speculation, but it's a very viable speculation that definitely needs to be studied. In other words, all these trees and all of this forest that we kind of take for granted usually would transform completely if we were to listen to it in ultrasound. Although according to this paper, they only seem to be screaming when they're in stress. The sounds that were generated by a healthy plant were almost insignificant, to the point where the scientists behind this paper were even able to train a machine learning algorithm, also known as CNN classifier in this case, to listen to plants and detect whenever they were in trouble. And according to the scientists behind this paper, the algorithm was exceptionally accurate. It was basically able to detect and predict sounds from various plants very accurately and um, essentially establish when these plants were in trouble and when they needed to be, for example, watered or if there was something else bothering them. And this, of course, creates a huge opportunity for someone to create an AI algorithm that would predict when plants need to be um, taken care of. It's a huge discovery for agriculture and it's also a really huge discovery for our understanding of nature around us. It also kind of uh, gives this legend a little bit more credibility. Maybe, just maybe, back then, certain people could actually hear higher frequencies and maybe certain mandrakes did emit lower frequencies. So in other words, when someone pulled a mandrake out of the ground, it screamed so loudly that it would potentially kill a person or at least make them run away in pain because it would be a pretty loud sound. Now, how exactly are these sounds formed? Because unlike in Harry Potter, a mandrake and other plants don't actually have a mouth to scream. Well, the scientists behind this paper are almost certain that it's because of the so-called cavitation or bubble formation that often occurs inside plants when they're stressed. Now, we've already known about the formation of bubbles when the plants are, for example, cut, and we've also known that this is a kind of a stress response, but we just didn't realize that it was so profound. And cavitation is a science we're really familiar with, like, for example, in submarines, cavitation is a study of, you know, keeping a submarine quiet so it doesn't get detected because if bubbles are produced, they become pretty loud. But in this case, it seems that bubbles or cavitation is the way plants communicate. And for all we know, we might have actually just discovered a way for us to talk to plants, or at least try to listen to them, try to understand their unusual language. Which, of course, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan like myself, means that maybe we could talk to ants after all. Maybe all trees are ants as well. Which, of course, gives us even more reason to appreciate trees and to plant more of them as well. But to be absolutely honest with you, when I read this paper, it made me feel absolutely horrible because I actually have a few plants in the house. I tried to be really good with them. I tried to water them. I tried to give them all of the sunlight they wanted, but I realized I really, really suck with plants. I'm horrible. Every time I plant something, it turns kind of sort of, uh, I don't want to show you pictures, but they don't look so good. Even cacti. I've even killed cactuses. So, in a sense, this gave me a New Year's resolution. I'm gonna try to find a way to uh, listen to the needs of my plants. I might be able to get some sort of a microphone or possibly create one and find a way to listen to their screaming. And if it's too loud, um, well, maybe I'll have someone adapt them. But I also try to do my best to water them when they need it. This is actually a huge, huge opportunity for me to tinker with things and to find a way to listen to my plants as well. Now, if you have any ideas on how to do this easier, please let me know in the comments below. All of the microphones I've seen so far are actually really, really expensive and really difficult to acquire as well because they're very specific. But if you do have an ultrasonic microphone and it's something that you know how to use, try to listen to the plants nearby and leave a comment below. Let me know what you found. Or possibly take a picture and share it with me on Twitter so that we can talk about this more in some of the future videos. But anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention. It's a huge discovery. It's probably going to transform the way we think about plants, or hopefully it will. And it's very likely going to develop a whole new area of um, plant communication. But let's maybe not rush things too far. Maybe they're just making bubbles. We don't really know if it's really speech yet. 
Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about science, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and possibly help these guys plant those 20 million trees by donating a buck or two. On that note, I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.